Good. You may be seated right where you are. We're going to get right into the word of God. I hope you brought your Bibles with you today. Did you bring your Bibles? Yes. Okay, it doesn't matter where you have it on a device, your iPad, your iPhone, your Android, and the good old-fashioned paper. It's all right, as long as you have it with you. And worst case scenario, we ought to hide the word where? In our hearts. So the word ought to be hidden in our hearts. We want to celebrate our apostle, Apostle Eugene, today. Thank God for you being with us, sir. We love you. Amen. We thank God. We honor the spirit of the Lord that is in this place, that has met us here. And God has something great in store for you today. We thank God for Pastor Jane and Deacon uh, being in the house with us today. We thank God for all of New Beginnings, just continuing the fellowship. We expect God to continue to pour himself out and in us so that we can grow and go. We want to welcome our viewing audience with us today. We've gotten, um, let's celebrate our viewers. We thank God for them being a part of what God is doing here in the nation's capital and uh, we received word from England on this uh, past uh, week that England is joining and the United Kingdom is joining in with us and worshiping alongside. So if you're there, you're watching from the United Kingdom, we want to welcome you today. We thank God for you. God bless you. We have been talking about what, saints of God? Creating spiritual capacity developing, cultivating spiritual capacity. And I want to continue in there and look at how God does this work in us. In the most simplistic way, and what we're doing is bringing us to a state of consciousness so that we can understand when God is doing something great in the midst of his people. Oftentimes, as saints of God, we miss what God is doing. We're looking for him to come in a way, in a particular way, a way based on our preconceptions, the way we thought that he used to do things. The book of Jeremiah says what? He is going to do a new thing. I don't know about anybody else. If God is doing something, it's going to be new to me. Hmm? Whatever God has done, he is going to, it's going to be new to me. I am not God. So every day is an opportunity to experience God on a new level. Every opportunity that we get, we should take full advantage of it so that God can be expressed in the earth. Without the expression of God in the earth, what do we have left? We had occasion to be a part of a political event on yesterday. And all of the politicians to a person, they wanted to express how they're going to change and how they're going to manage and how they're going to rule different than the previous administration. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, unless you, we begin to express God in the earth, there is no new thing. So the packaging, though it might be different in different politicians, a different name it may be called, a different ideology, but when it's all said and done, it's the new that is only God, and they're doing the same old thing the same old way, just packaged different. But the truth of the matter is that God, when he says he's going to do a new thing with us, he is truly going to do something different. He's going to blow our minds and say, I want to express myself in the earth through my word. And when we receive this download, we are positioned greatly for what God is doing. There's some that have come from near and far, and they've been on this journey for a very long time. I speak to you today and say, God is going to do a new thing in you. And if he's going to, if he says he will, I am confident. I've been around long enough to be, have some experience underneath my belt. That's why we're speaking from this topic of building and cultivating the capacity to receive the download from on high. And when we talk about the capacity, what we're doing here is we're saying that we're going to use our God-given abilities and the resources that God provides so that he can get the glory. Without him getting the glory, then all our efforts are in vain. That's why the, the, the pulpit that we are on, this lectern, 
It's not a place for showmanship. It's not a place for me to demonstrate to you my prowess in the, in the scriptures. No, it's a place for us to show God at the forefront of everything that we do and say. It is God's desire that every time we come into worship, that we bring our very best offering, our very best self, not to be on display for anyone else to see, but so that it will be, it will be pleasing to God. Everything and everyone that we are and to become must be pleasing to God first and foremost. This is not a demonstration of uh, how good we can dance. This is not a, a demonstration of how good we can shout. None of that is relevant. The old church used to preach against long dresses, uh, against short dresses, that is. They wanted to preach the hem of the dress all the way down to the floor. But the truth of the matter is that mama and them and, and grandma and them, sister and them, and the brothers too, I'm not going to speak on the women only, because it took the men and the women coming together. So no matter how long the dress was, if it wasn't a sanctified soul, they would do the same old things that the short dress folks would do. So now we're not going to be preaching against hymns any longer, right? Then we began to preach against the colors. Okay? You know, if you wore red, you were off the devil. You were Jezebel. Isn't that what the old church used to do? And we missed the opportunity to put the word of God into the vessel so that they can demonstrate and give God glory. It's important that we put things in the proper perspective, saints of God, until we have things in order. Until we have the order of God, we will not be giving him the glory that is due his name. Then we have those that would destroy, as we talked about in the last session, we will destroy. Don't, do you not know that you are the temple of the living God? We are the temple. Turn to your neighbor and say, I am the temple. The temple of the living God. I have no right to destroy this temple. So what we put in must reflect God all the way. What we eat, where we eat. There's a book out called Pigs in the Parlor dealing with demonic warfare. We need to go back and look at that again. God's desire is to place himself in all of us so that we can be that radiant beauty that he has created. And I'm not talking about the flesh, the outward appearance. I'm talking about the spirit of the person, the soulish dimension that is to be on display. When we look at you, when God looks at us, we, he ought to see a reflection of not us, but himself. He is not looking at us to see us. He is looking at us to see himself. That is the very reason that our lives need to become a mirror for God. The cultivation of spiritual capacity resides in that mirror image of the living Jesus Christ. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 1 verse 3 says, Blesses the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear it and take to heart what is written in it because the time is near. Somebody shout, the time is near. You might want to write that down and 10 years from now you're going to look at it and it's still going to be re relevant. The time is near. It's nearer then than it is even today. But I'm here to let you know that the time is near. What time is it that I'm talking about? It's time for the sons of God to be manifested in the earth. God is soon to return. And he wants his sons to be on display continually. And the only way that we are going to be on display is to have received the download from on high and, and be in the position to give him the glory. I wrote a note to myself to point out to you that spiritual capacity is the reservoir within us that holds our potential for growth. Let me say that again for you. Spiritual capacity is the reservoir. You all know what a reservoir is, right? It contains water. And a dry reservoir is like a child of God without, a, without the spirit of God. The water here represents the spirit of God. So the spiritual capacity is a reservoir within us that holds our potential for growth. 
It holds our potential for understanding. In all our understanding, we ought to, in all our getting, that is, we ought to have understanding. And it's the connection with God who is greater than ourselves. The word of God is so real to me these days that every time I get the chance to sit down and allow him to marinate his spirit through the word, I get excited. I no longer need to feel the chills because the word of God has been hidden in my heart. We talked about the quickening and the shaking last week. But God wants us to be quickened by the spirit of God. He wants us to be shook by the spirit of God so that our in our abilities will be reflected of he and he alone. The capacity that we're talking about here, the spirit of God, it's like a muscle. It requires exercise. And it requires nourishment. Therein lies why we have got to be careful where we feed. What table are you sitting? Who is feeding your spirit man so that you can receive from God exactly what he has in store? Who here is sitting at the feet of men and women that are imparting wisdom to you? You ought to be at the table every day. Just like you, you know, for some people it's difficult for them to go on a fast. Why? Because they're not accustomed to it. They got to eat all the time. As long as you're eating something, then they figure it's all right. Now, my appetite has gone to a place where I have to be very careful where I eat. My physical body, as I've gotten older, it has changed. I've got to be careful what I eat. The same thing is true in my spirit. Now, I've got to be careful who I listen to, who feeds me. The word of God. Who is creating real nourishment or false nourishment? Yes, I can go to our fast food restaurant. I can be filled up to the point of capacity, overflowing stuff, bloated. But there is no nutrient in the in that food. But when I sit and there's a balanced meal that has been prepared, then I can find nourishment. As a matter of fact, it doesn't cause me to become sluggish. It produces energy. The same thing is true when you're in the word of God. The word of God will provide the the nourishment and the nutrition that you need so you can grow. And we can grow and be demonstrative in the ways of God. This is why we have to delve in the word of God. And have our effective prayer life going and gather the tools that God is releasing. God is releasing some tools. You ever notice, you know, I'm a man's man. Let's put it that way. One of my hobbies is to go to the the hardware store. That's it. I'm talking to a friend of mine and he he asks, where are you? I'm in the local hardware store. What are you buying? Nothing. Why are you there? I like walking up and down the aisles and see what's in the hardware store. Some guys collect tools. They got more tools than you can shake a stick at. If you could ever need to shake a stick. Just got a whole bunch. of These are these are that's what we do. The same thing is true. God is putting in his word the tools that we need. So we just need to go down shopping down God's grocery store. Our ladies, let me talk to you now. We're walking and how, you know how long y'all spend in the store, right? Some of you anyway. You walk up and down every aisle. That's why I don't go shopping with my wife because I can't take it. It stresses me out. But it's okay if I go to the hardware store, though. I can spend all day in the hardware store. You see, (laughs) somebody else agrees with me, but God is doing, that's how we ought to be in the word of God. We ought to walk down the pages of the Bible day in and day out. It's like tools so that when you need that particular tool, it's right there. It's hidden in the heart. That's the capacity that has been created in us. That he will use the word like a tool in a skilled master's hand. I was told many years ago in my training that a preacher is like a surgeon. And a good surgeon never opens a wound without closing it back up. Because if he opens a wound and leaves it open, bacteria and all kinds of stuff goes in and the 
person could die. The same thing is true here. That's the reason why we approach the death the way we have, because God has matured us in a way that we ought to spill out life and life alone. You ought to feel encouraged by having been in the presence of the Lord. Another way of cultivating this capacity that we're talking about is being connected to the right spiritual source so that we can grow. You are connected to the right spiritual source. God has you right where he wants you right now for the right reason so that he can get the glory. It's all about him getting the glory, saints of God. I don't care how good you feel or how bad you feel. As long as God is getting the glory, he, he is doing something good inside of us. Sometimes I've got to walk down the aisle. I might step on your toe. Just say, ouch, and say, thank you, Jesus, right behind it. Once again, the Holy Spirit is the custodian of our spiritual capacity, and we must fully engage him to make the most out of what God has given to us. He is the custodian. You know, the custodian is more than the, he's not a janitor anymore. So the janitor cleans the building, right? The school building, that's how I used to refer to it back in my day. But the custodian, the custodian had all the keys. Y'all remember that? You know, uh, I can't think of the name of, uh, of the comedian now, but nonetheless, Mr. Bookman, that's who it is, Mr. Bookman. Mr. Bookman, he used to have all, a whole bunch of keys on the side of it. Y'all remember that? He was the custodian. He had the key to everything. The Bible, the Holy Spirit is like Mr. Bookman or Mr. Bookman is like the Holy Spirit. He has all the keys to meet every need that you could possibly have. He says, my God shall supply all, not some, but all of my needs according to his riches. So with that said, let's again look at the formal definition that we're using for spiritual capacity. Repeat after me, please. Spiritual capacity is using our God-given abilities and resources to fulfill our purpose and glorify God. Oh, my goodness. Let's move. That was a good practice. Let's say it again. It meant spiritual capacity is using our God-given abilities and resources to fulfill our purpose and glorify God. I want that to sit in your spirit as when you walk out of here today and as you go along the, the week. It's to a point now, I'm, every day that I wake up, I'm saying, you know what, God, I want to use your abilities that you have given to me. I need you to resource those abilities so that I can give you the glory. And I'm walking around talking to God in that way all day long, every day. And all of a sudden, then somebody knocks on the door and says, I want to donate $10,000 to your cause. I want to donate $50,000 to your cause so that God can get the glory. There is somebody out there that has been resourced in such a manner that will give you and will provide for you the resources that God intends for you to have. But you've got to be positioned. You've got to be positioned. You have to receive the capacity. It was a time a couple of years ago. I was, I shared the story in times past. I was at my desk and the phone rang. And the person says, you know, are you Cliff Beckford? Are you the director here? I said, yes, I am. Well, we want to donate $50,000 to your operation. Now, some of us will start wanting, well, the real spiritual folks, in quote, would probably pass out on the floor. Then you have those that would want to question what is being done. You know, what, what, what do you mean? then you have to have the capacity to hear the Holy Ghost speaking through the telephone and say, yes, I receive exactly what it is that God has told you to do, donate in this direction. Saints of God, when you are equipped, when we are ready, you won't question God about what he's doing. You won't fall out and faint out so that people will look at you unseemly. You won't do anything that will shame God. You will say, God, I thank you for what it is that you're doing in our lives now. Do you see God at work, saints of God? That's how he wants you to be, postured. Then there are those that are going to be a blessing to be a blessing to somebody else. Let's, 
ah, no, I know I won't go there right yet. I need to stay focused for just a minute because we are limited on time today. But I want us to be embracing exactly how God is doing things in this season. I want to look at a passage of scripture that we've been very familiar with down through the years. I'm going to look at it, and I promise you, you'll see things through a different lens here and now. Let's look at Luke chapter 5 real quickly. And I'm going to read and talk a little bit, read and talk a little bit more. So you write your notes because these are going to be triggers that's going to activate your ability and your capacity to receive from a spiritual standpoint. So it was, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Genesaret. Luke chapter 5 is where I am. And saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Pause for emphasis. The fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Look at how God is going to show us what capacity is in this verse. What do we have here as being God-given abilities? We see the first one is the fisherman, right? The second one, whether or not you see it there or not, and now, now you will see it, is the boat makers. Somebody made the boat that the fishermen were using. So the God has resourced the boat maker to make boats with the trees. And then you have the net makers, skilled individuals. And these three craftsmen are embedded in this one verse. Those are capabilities, those are abilities, and those are resources on display so that God can get the glory. We know how this story ends, right? But we've not ever seen and not always looked at it from that perspective that God is using the simple things in your life to show you how he has resourced you, how he's connected you, how he's blessing you so that he can get the glory. It is important that we see God's hand at work. If we miss this, we will miss the opportunity to be a blessing to someone. If the boat maker didn't make a boat, then the fisherman wouldn't have a boat to go fishing in. And if the, the net maker didn't have a boat, um, didn't have the net, then he wouldn't have a need for a boat maker for the fisherman to go fishing in. So you see how God has connected you to something and someone else. Do you see that? What gift, what ability is that you have that you're sitting on that you're saying it's irrelevant. God don't need me. I need to ask God for more. God is saying right here, right now, you need to use what I have already given to you. Because someone somewhere is waiting on this capacity that has been created in you to do exactly what it is that you're doing. If the teachers were to never teach, then our children would, would not have the abilities to learn some of the things that they learn. If the doctors didn't study medicine, some of us would have been dead a long time ago. All these things are there for the glorification of God. How many times have we read this passage? We will readily focus on the fishermen. Isn't that what we always do? We focus on the fishermen. But God wants us to see the full potential in all of his creation, saints of God. Turn to your neighbor and say, nothing just happens. Nothing just happens. Sometimes things come up in our lives and we have to, we're so focused on either the pain or the pleasure that we overlook the intent of God. You might be going through something here today and you say, Pastor Cliff, you just don't understand. I may not understand what you're going through, but I can declare that God can get the glory out of it. You just got to have a right approach and a right outlook on what God is do allowing to occur in your life today. And this is what I'm called capacity building. Being able to see the hand of God at work in all of creation. Verse number three. It says, then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. Let's get the, the spiritual nuggets of capacity that's hidden in this text. 
Jesus not only zeroes in on the fisherman, he finds the owner of one of the vessels. You see how Jesus does things? He does things in order and very systematically. We can never skip the process of God's hand in our lives. If you do, you got to go back and repeat the class that you were supposed to have graduated from. He sees Simon as the entrepreneur. Simon had the ability. So Jesus says, I'm going to go to the one that is going to do exactly what it is that I want done. Jesus heads right to the CEO of Simon's Fishing Incorporation. See how he does it? He goes right to the top. Sometimes we've got to open up ourselves to be able to approach the topmost position of what it is that you're pursuing. Don't be afraid, saints of God. Uh, young people, I want you to not be afraid. I was listening to a story Sister Evie was sharing with me on just yesterday. And she was sharing how uh, when she was doing her work in one department, she was doing it so well. And the head of another department was leaving. And he thought enough of her to say, I want you to come and take my position. Young people, you need to hear this. Old people, you need to hear this. Hey, everybody, you all need to hear this. Nonetheless, everybody. Nonetheless, she says, well, you know, I'm so glad that you want to. Um, no, the person said, I need to find someone to take my position. That's how the story goes. And Sister Eve, if you're watching today, God bless you real good. I'm using your story. Nonetheless, she turned to the person and says, look, I will help you find the person. The gentleman says, no, I'm not looking for anybody. You are the one. Point to your neighbor and say, you are the one. You are. Yes, you are the one that God is looking for. And so it goes on. The story goes. She, she says, well, you know what? You want me. The gentleman says, basically, name your price. She was right where God intended her for her to be. Amen. So the Holy Spirit came upon her. She had never done anything like this before. But she heard the voice of God. She says, well, you know, I have the utmost respect for my current manager. I can't just leave them high and dry. As much as you would want me. This is what my desires are. I want, I will come to you on these conditions. I will come to you if you pay my salary, but I've got to work part-time for you for six months and part-time for my employer, my current employer for another six months, but you're going to pay me my full salary. Saints of God, let me be the one. Yes, I'm trying to get you to see how God does things in the season that we're in. This is a season of acceleration. This is a season of promotion. This is a season of the manifestation of sons in the earth. You as a son of God can make some demands for those that need and require your services. I don't know who I'm blessing today, but God says it is time for you to make a demand. a tug on the Holy Spirit. So as the story goes... I'll move it quickly. She says, fine. The general, her current manager, um, she went to him and says, look, this is what I've negotiated. I negotiated for you to release me, but I'm going to stay with you part time for six months so that you could hire someone. And this is not going to cost you anything. And I will train the person. I will impart to the person who will replace me. And at the same time, I'm working over here part time. That's how God is going to do, saints of God. He is going to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you do not have enough room to receive. Do you believe what I'm talking to you today? You've got to have a capacity to receive the rain that's coming into your season. While I'm giving you and showing you our natural abilities, I want you to be able to focus on the spiritual development that is going on in your life here and now. Remember, it's God-given abilities and resource, resources so that God gets the glory. And most of you here, you know how Sister Evie serves. Faithfully, continually, nonstop. How many of you will receive a blessing and then run away from God? 
How many of us will receive a blessing and forgot how we got the blessing? My desire today is that everything that God blesses me with, every tool in his arsenal, it is so that I can demonstrate the glory of God in the earth. When I walk down the street, somebody ought to know that I have had an encounter with God. When you walk down the street, somebody ought to know that you've had an encounter with God. Your spiritual capacity has been built up. You've been equipped with the tools of the word of God. Amen. And the iron that you are will go out and find some other irons to sharpen. Let's look at verse 4 as I move very quickly. It says, when he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch or droth in one text. Simon, you're going to have to trust me at my word. Simon, launch out. Well, you know, you all know the story. I don't see where, you know, there was a whole lot of discussion from Jesus' standpoint. My friends, these things have been written for our learning. Don't argue with the Holy Spirit. Don't argue with the Holy Spirit. He is working in you. Verse number five, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, we ought to have that nevertheless in our belly. If you're going to put up an argument, put up an argument with a nevertheless. But I, my desire is that you ought not to put up an argument today. The children of Israel, they walked around for years upon years upon years with an argument, murmuring and complaining while the promised land was right in front of them. My friends, God's desire is that we enter in. Enter in through the capacity that has been created in you. It says, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. <laughs> I won't spend any time dealing with the plurality or the singularity of the word net and nets. You all know the story. I don't need to preach it to you. Partial obedience is disobedience. When God says release all, he literally means all. When we do not release all, we're saying we don't trust God at his word. Shared stories many times over and how God once spoke to my heart and says, I want you to write a check for $1,000 and give it to someone. And in releasing that check to that individual, mind you, this was someone that I had developed some degree of disdain for, hurt because of pain that was in my heart. And God says, I want you to release the pain. And this is the instrument by which I'm going to use to release that pain out of your life. I don't know who I'm speaking with today. You know, God may not tell you to do it the way he told me to do it, but he's speaking. If you have any disdain, if you have any hurt or feelings in your life, you ought to release it. Because God wants to create in you a new capacity to receive spiritual download. And once I release that thing, immediately, somebody shout immediately. 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 The pain went away. No, I didn't buy a blessing. You cannot buy, you cannot give God anything that he does not already have. But he, what he is looking for is our obedience. And in walking in that obedience to the word of God, we were able to see and experience what it meant to have a release. Have you ever gone through something and some of you are going through it right now? You just say, you know what? I just have this thing in my heart. Pastor Cliff, I don't, I can't understand. I need to release it. I'm here today to let you know that God has met you at your need point. If you're desiring to release anything that you've been holding on to for years. Last week we talked about anxiety and fear. Today I'm talking about hurt. If you've been hurt in the church even, in your families, God is saying that I'm going to create in you, like David wrote, a clean heart. He wants to renew your spirit. Why? So that he can pour a new, a fresh anointing. Simon said, I don't know what 
I have done what I don't know what I don't know is what he really says. But all I know is that I'm going to apply it nevertheless to my comments. Lord, nevertheless, at your word. Yes, you have toiled all night. Yes, you have persevered. Yes, you have just kept on going. I don't understand, but God is saying, let me know right now. He wants to create a release in you from that pain. Some of you have had broken hearts. God says he's wanting to put those pieces back together again because he has great work for you. Let's stand on our feet, please. I'm, I'm pausing. The Lord has cut me off. I have four more pages to go, but he's cutting me off. We talked about going to the restaurant and overeating. I don't want you to come to the Lord's table and overeat. This word is enough. If I can get something playing in the background, I want to minister to a couple of people today. We have a, another ceremony right after this. But the Lord is moving on me to do it here and now. To speak to the hearts of the people. And allow his presence to take full control. If you would bow your heads right where you are. Just raise your hands. Yes. Just raise your hands right there. And begin having a conversation with God. 